What's up everybody? I'm in the mobile man cave about to do some work on the Rad Rover. And uh, you, you like the man cave? If you like what you see, you wanna do this to your trailer, check out my website. I'm gonna put links to all the gadgets I got in here on there, as well as all the gadgets that are on my e-bikes and motorcycles. So ridewithcitizen.com, take a look. But anyway, we're gonna put the new 50 volt, 52 volt battery on the bike today. And um, first, let me tell you which battery I got. I got that one. Right there, the Halong Fat Shark 52 volt 17.5 amp hour battery. So let's take a quick look at it. So there you go. It's a little bit uh, taller than the Rad Rover battery, probably a little bit shorter, but the same width. It is heavier. It's like probably two and a half pounds heavier when I weighed it on my scale. So this is what's going on there. I chose that one instead of the triangle bag battery thing just because I like the look of that better having it mounted on the bike stem I think it looks more professional or finished look you know rather than having a battery inside a, a bag velcroed on your bike I don't know I just I don't like the velcro bag look thing it just doesn't do it for me um to each their own if you like it go grab it but I don't like having you know this area of the bike all clogged up with that bag so Eh, whatever. I chose to get that one because I, I think it's a cleaner look. So that's the one we're going with. Um, I got it at Electro Bike World. You guys probably think I work for them as much as I've said their name the last two days, but that's where I've bought all my parts lately because they had a whole rad over section with everything in stock. So, you know, I grabbed um, the motor and battery and everything from there. So check it out if you're looking for one, but that's where I got it. It was $520, I think it was. So we're gonna get this battery on the bike today and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna sound insane, but st st stay with me. Just stick with me on it and, and hear me out, okay? For those of you that own a Rad Rover, you know that the controller, the plug that comes out of it that goes to the battery is like this little barrel type connector, right? So if you take a look at the thing coming off my new battery cradle, it's that. It's Anderson power poles, I believe these are called. So I need to find a way to plug those Anderson power pole connector things into the controller, which has a different plug. So I've come up with a way to do it. And I'm gonna show you that. And like I said, just, just stay with me. Okay, so coming out of the controller, I've got you know this barrel connector type plug here, and it's gonna plug into this, this pigtail that I got from you know Bolton's website which goes from the barrel plug into an XT90 connector, right? And then next, that's gonna plug into this one. I bought this connector, which is an XT92 Anderson power poles. And then that will go into the battery cradle Anderson power poles and everything will be connected. Okay, now that everyone's head just exploded, let me tell you why I'm doing it like this, okay? so. You might say, okay, well, just, you've got this right here. Just cut this off and eliminate that and just splice Anderson power poles on the end of this thing instead of the XT90 and plug it in, right? And the battery came with a set of those. However, uh, number one, I don't like cutting and splicing wires. And number two, these are wires of a different gauge. These ones are way thicker. So I don't know um, the best way to connect wires of different gauges. I I'm not sure how to do that properly. So, you know, I, I am just searching for a so solution to make this plug and play. And this setup right here makes it plug and play. So I'll probably at some point, you know, change this to a more efficient and proper connection later. I'm just trying to get things to work right now easily and yeah, I'd be willing to bet that 90% of the people watching this video don't want to cut and splice wires and change connectors and blah, blah, blah. And this setup right here, you don't have to do that. It is all, you just plug them all in. So I know you think I'm insane, but that's that's why I'm doing it, okay? So not the best method, I'm sure. Uh, maybe not the appropriate method, but you know, I'll, I'll take advice in the comments if you want the best way to connect this. But you know, these, the wires coming out of this battery are definitely a higher gauge than out of this plug and probably out of the controller. So I don't know. I mean, these wires might even 
overheat with this setup. Who knows what's going to happen? We're going to find out. That's what my channel's about. Just some regular guy. You know, don't do not take my advice. <laughs> I should say that. Okay. I am just some guy on YouTube with an e-bike that is messing around, adding stuff to it, uh, trying to make it work. I mean, who knows what I've done wrong on this bike. Uh, it's for your entertainment only, and I'm showing you, I'm just documenting how I'm doing it, okay? So find a better way, uh, find a proper way, have an electric bike technician do it for you, but you know, this is how I'm gonna set it up just for now. Um, I'll probably end up changing it out later. There you go, um, I'll put links to where I got all this stuff. This one is actually from Bolton, uh, part of his plug and play kit thing for the Rover. And then this other one, this little pigtail, I don't remember the site I got it, I'll put it in the description though, but you know, I just Googled for XT90 to Anderson power poles and it came right up and I got it. So put all that stuff in the description. Next thing to do is get the old cradle off, get the new cradle on and plug everything in. So let's find out if it works. Okay, well, the battery is on there. What do you think? I like it better than the bag battery. Um, I'm still determining what I'm gonna do with the wiring. Uh, I just zip tied it to the, the down post for now, just, just so I could go ride it. And I just went out for a really quick, like down the street and back ride. Um, initially, I gotta do way more testing on it, but initially it, it's very, pulls hard off the line for sure. But it did that when I did the motor upgrade. So it feels just maybe a little bit more acceleration with the battery. I got a feeling the battery is gonna come into play at the higher end, the top end speed. So, but I, I did not test that yet. I, I'm wearing shorts, a t-shirt and a hat. So I, I kind of want to maybe put on a pair of pants or a helmet or something in case, <laughs> cause if I'm gonna go 40 miles an hour on this thing or something crazy, uh, I want to put at least a helmet on. So we'll do that maybe tomorrow. I got somewhere to be right now, but it's on there. Um, take a look. There you go. That's my setup as of right now. I, I think it looks better than the bag batteries personally. Uh, this is a, again, it's a 52 volt, 17.5 amp hour. And I, I chose this one you know, because I like the way it looks on the frame. And also too, you know, the triangle ones are like a 20 something amp hour. And truthfully, I don't need that. I mean, I can't use the range out of my 14 amp hour stock battery. So 17 and a half is gonna be more than enough for me. I don't need 20, so that wasn't a factor. Um, you can see my plugs and wiring and stuff is just literally just zip tied there for right now until I find a good way I wanna do that. There you go, it's on. I will hopefully do some testing tomorrow for you know hill climb and quarter mile and eighth mile and acceleration and all that stuff and get that uh, you know finalized results video out to you. But right now, this thing is a beast. <laughs> it's so fun to ride. It accelerates so fast. And I mean, zero to like 27 miles an hour is nothing on this bike. It, just, it pulls strong the whole way there. We'll see, I ran it up to about 28 and then let the throttle go. It was still climbing. So kind of curious to see what the top end is gonna be on this baby. If the bike goes over 35, I'll be happy. Not that I'll ever use that. I mean, God, like 99% of the riding I do is just putting around town. Or the only times I'm really pushing this thing to the limit are for the videos I make. I mean, normally I'm just leisurely riding this around. I know you guys give me crap in the comments. I quit speeding on the greenways. It's pretty rare that I'm speeding on the greenways. So, yeah, do I need a bike that goes 35 or 40 miles an hour? No, but I mean, do people need a Corvette that goes 200 miles an hour? No, because they just put around town in it. But it's nice to say that your bike does it. It'll be fantastic and say, yeah, I got an e-bike. Upgraded it myself and the darn thing goes 40 miles an hour without pedaling it. So, results video coming out uh, shortly. Guys, stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell, so you know when it comes out and you can know if you wanna do all this stuff to your Rover. I'm gonna to try to make that comprehensive so it shows you, like I said, the four stages of the build and also the price. I know you guys are interested in what all this stuff actually cost me to do. And all said and done, I mean, this Rover is gonna be probably a $2,500 bike uh, with all the stuff I've added to it. And that's not even counting like all this extra crap I've had to buy, like the little plug connectors and the, star bit tool sets and you know everything i needed to do the work so but i'll get all the pricing in there so you you can know what you want to do if you want to go out and just spend that money out of the gate for a better bike or if you want to start with the rover and have the fun of doing all these upgrades yourself it was kind of kind of nice actually to go from uh this is my first e-bike so to feel 
what that's like having an e-bike. I felt like Superman when I got it, right? And then kind of got bored with it and then jumped it up with controller and kind of got bored and then jumped it with the motor and now battery. So now we're, we're pretty much topped out at this point. I don't know off the top of my head what else I could do to it to make it any faster. And I got a feeling it's, it's really fast enough. I mean, if I want to go fast, I got motorcycles for that. So uh, it's, it's a beast of a bike. And I'm happy with it as it sits right now. I'll let you know if there's any problems I have with uh, you know, anything heating up, wires or batteries, or what I do with all those connections, how I change that. But for now, it was plug and play and it worked. So you can do it. That is all for now. I will hit you back with another video here in the next couple of days. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Go out and do something cool with your bike too and inspire some other people. I'll talk to you later.